In the middle of June, I ordered a brand new Rivendell Joe Appaloosa. This batch of frames sold out in about 30 minutes, and I was really lucky to get one. I ordered a complete bike that was built up by Mark at Rivendell, and it showed up in the mail about a month and a half later. This bike was packed by Antonio. Thanks, Antonio. And it's carefully packed with a lot of zip ties, pipe insulation, bubble wrap, and plastic tape. I removed just enough so that I could get it into my bike repair stand. And greased up the seat post. Got that installed. And I got it up in my stand. I'd say the whole process took me two or three hours, and I'm pretty slow. Greased up the stem. Got the bars on. I saved all of the pipe insulation and packing foam, but I've yet to find a use for it. I got the front wheel on. And I installed the pedals. Now here I ran into a little bit of trouble. This is a Brooks B17 Special. And from what I understand, the width of the rails of these saddles is inconsistent. Sometimes too narrow, sometimes too wide. But you can usually persuade them into place. And in my instance, I could not. No matter how I fought with this thing, I just couldn't get it seated in the seat post. So I ended up sending it back to Rivendell, and they sent me another brand new saddle, and that one worked out just fine. I replaced the fork crown bolts with new brass bolts. I take any opportunity I can to install brass on a bicycle. These are brass metric bolts made in the USA. I got these from McMaster Car, and I paid dearly for them. I think they were about six bucks a piece, which is just insane. And there's the head badge. These are Nito Billy bars with gray and maroon bar tape, a Nito fillet faceplate stem. It's about 130 millimeters, I think. Paul Canty levers in silver. We've got a Neo Retro set of cantilever brakes in the front and a pair of touring canties in the back with moon units. There's another look at that Brooks B-17. This seat post is an SR Sake Ringyo MTE-100 that I found on eBay. I like a lot of setback. Tires are Rennie Hearst Antelope Hill, 55 millimeters. And here's a look at the head tube. Beautiful lugs there. Got a double crank silver, Rivendell's house brand. And uh, blue lug brass crank bolt caps. Now, when Mark assembled this bike for me at Rivendell, Will was nice enough to take some film photographs of the process, and he sent these over to me. 
I was really excited to have some pictures of my bike being built up at Riv. And just really grateful that Will made the time to take these film photos, develop them, scan them, edit them, tune them, and send them over to me. So the cable hanger for the front brake was black. And this is in the headset stack. Um, I really prefer silver parts, so I decided to swap out this black cable hanger for a silver one. I removed the stem and handlebars. Hold them in a place with a uh, twist tie. And you might be able to see it. There are some brass headset spacers here from Blue Lug in Japan. I am just nuts for brass. And there's the silver cable hanger. Got that reinstalled. And don't worry, there's plenty of grease on that stem. And here I'm threading the brake cable into the cable hanger and putting a new ferrule on the end of the uh, cable there. And reinstalling that Paul Moon unit. And reconnecting the brakes. This is a vintage crane Suzu Bell. I got this on eBay. And I love the patina and the wear and that hint of green, that oxidization. It looks a lot like the paint color of the bike. Here I'm putting on a little bit of cotton bar tape. Figure it can't hurt. This will kind of protect the stem from the clamp for the bell. This is a wide foot leader bottle cage made in Nebraska, I believe. And this is a King Iris cage. And there are also some stainless steel spacers to get past this massive front derailleur clamp. These I think are either five or six millimeter stainless steel spacers also from McMaster car. Now I decided to try and replace the washers on my silver two shifters and these are brass finishing washers for woodworking they're also called cup washers they're made in China they are 10 cents a piece and they just fit over the black plastic washer on the shifter and accept one of the d-ring bolts and these work out for me and I think they look fantastic I had noticed that the crank cap was a little loose, so I used a pair of split ring pliers to tighten it up. And you don't really see it move here, but I did manage to tighten it a hundredth of a turn. And next, I installed the rear rack and the saddlebag. This is an older Nito rack. I can't remember the model number. And it's got a pretty aggressive angle here. I didn't bend the struts that go near the top of the seat stays, but it works out well for me. No tire rub, no problems. 
This is a Rivendell Sackville medium saddle sack, which they call the Happy Sack. I zip tied it to the rack and cut the tails of the zip ties. I added a vertical piece of coroplast to the back to help the bag keep its shape. It works out really well for me. And that reflective triangle is from Blue Lug. Here's some of the stuff I carry. A mini pump, tire boot, spare tube, and a little tool roll. This is a piece of wax canvas. There's a Leatherman, Bondus multi-tool, Pedro's tire levers, chain tool, patch kit, spare keys, couple of spare chain links, and a leather toe strap. Up front, I've got a stem caddy. This is a nylon pouch from Outer Shell, made in the USA. Super handy. And that's it. That is my Joe Appaloosa. I love this bike.